up you are and welcome to fresh and fruity this is another episode where we will teach you more about fruit farming and today we will learn more about farming of mangoes we are in embu county in an area in manyata south and here we visit a farmer this farmer does different mango varieties using river water where he pumps his water from the river to do irrigation on his trees now well stay tuned as he takes us through his mango farming practices so that you at home can become a good mango farmer in Datu area manyata constituency in embu we meet a vibrant fruit farmer who has invested heavily in mango farming mr Silas Yonjiru, an administrative police officer by profession ventured into mango farming eight years ago before settling for mangoes he had done a bit of trial and errors on various types of farming at first he started out with tree planting which proved to be time consuming he then decided to grow bananas on his farm but the production level could not match the input on the farm from this, Mr. Njiro then took a leap on mangoes, and since then, he admits that the farming activity has been productive. What I'm doing here is mangoes. That is the, the main. I have around um, 100 stems of different species of mangoes. When I got employed, I left this land and went to Nairobi. But this is my father's land. So I, I thought what I can, how I can make use of this uh, land. I decided, I decided to plant trees so that I can sell them later as firewood or wood. But um, I decided against it. I decided to plant um, mangoes. Because mangoes don't need a lot of work. All what you need to do is to take care of insect sides and um, you need to cultivate a bit and manure. That's why I decided to do um, mangoes. And again, it's mangoes are seasonal. So in uh, December, January and February. The mango tree has been cultivated in Kenya for centuries. Ivory and slave traders are believed to have brought the seed into the country during the 14th century. There are many mango varieties grown, but the most common are the round mango, also preferred to as the apple mango, and the long mango locally known as Ngowe, among others. At Mr. Njiro's farm, there are about seven varieties of mango trees. Out of the seven, three varieties are self-generated from grafting two varieties, which have turned out to produce quality fruits. This is an um, apple mango. This one with the one I'm holding is apple mango. We have Kent. We have Tommy. Tommy is a very sweet. Apple mango. Then we have Van Dyke. Van Dyke is the sweetest mango you would want to eat and is the most expensive. Those are the types of mangoes we have. But uh, Kent takes longer to, to grow because after, after February, mangoes get finished then in uh, in March and April that's when we we take Kent because that is the time it is ready after February there are no more mangoes until December again different mango varieties have different sizes and shapes which aids in market identification for example the apple mango is round shaped among others apple mango is almost round and it's big it's yellowish Tommy, Tommy is uh, oval and red and very big. We have Kent. Kent is very big and total green. And is the only the, the mango you get in the supermarkets in uh, in January and February. And it's very very hard, but it's very sweet after it, it ripens. Again, we have what we call um, sensation. Sensation is black, and sensation will not feel like uh, it's overripe but they are very good the problem with the sensation is a lot it's loved by insects and is loved by some worms but with the chemicals what we use and we use also use traps to trap because 
the flies, the mango flies. That is what we use mostly. We don't encourage farmers to use um, a lot of chemicals in the mangoes. Mangoes can be propagated from seed or propagated vegetatively. When Mr. Njeru started out on mango farming, he will buy his seedlings from professionally propagated nurseries. All the trees planted on his farm are well grafted, thus high quality production is expected. I went to Embu town and um, bought some seedlings and I, my work is to go, I, 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 when I'm on duty, we travel a lot. And when I travel, I get in the show, agricultural show, so shows. I'm a member of the ESK. So I normally buy mangoes, which are technologically treated and grown. Then I come with the seed rings. Then all of a sudden, everywhere we got the seed rings, like in Embu town, we have people who just their work is to graft. All these mangoes are grafted. And we are trying to encourage people here to abandon the, the native mangoes and get to the grafted mangoes. Grafting helps to ensure healthy growth and eliminates the chance of potentially negative genetic differences. The process of grafting a mango tree requires a bit of gardening skill and a proper plan in place. Having had an experience with grafting of the mango trees, Mr. Njiru elaborates how a mango farmer handles a grafted mango tree for healthy fruits. When you, you get a seedling, a seedling of any size, of any, any size just like this one, you, you, you cut, you get seeds, you plant the seeds, after planting the seeds, when the seed is about uh, one feet from the ground, that's the time now to graft. And you always graft with a piece of the mango you want, with a branch. After you, bra you, you graft, you are, it can start getting mangoes immediately, but because it's weak, you remove, you remove the bands. When you remove the, the, a band like this one, so that it doesn't have mangoes, right? Until the, the band is strong enough to carry mangoes. So within, within about three months, I mean three years, it's, the stem is strong, the stem can carry mangoes. First fruit, three years, you get the best, the, the, the best fruits, but since it is grafted, immediately it gets to the ground, it starts bringing mangoes. The problem is it will spoil the tree. So we, we control it after maybe two, after two years. After two years, you get enough, you start getting fruits. And uh, within the three, four, three years only, you get now the best mangoes. I can show you uh, this one. It's grafted into two mangoes, two types of mangoes, this one. It's the same tree. The same tree, you see on this side is Kent and this side is Tommy. This is Tommy on this is Tommy on this side and this is Kent on this side from the same stem. And you can have as many varieties as possible in one in one stem. You can see this is Tommy and you can see I mean, this is Kent and this is Tommy. Production of mangoes depends on how well a farmer has steered his farming activities. According to Mr. Njiru, his mango trees are able to produce a minimum of 300 mango fruits per tree and a maximum of 800 fruits, which he sells at 20 shillings per fruit. Uh, this one is small. We have other big ones. Uh, I would expect about uh, about 400 pieces or 350 pieces from this one from this one behind me. There are others which gives me up to 800 pieces. Yes, a single tree, 800 pieces. And when it gives me 800 pieces, for example, I, I carry those mangoes from here and I take to Nairobi. The cheapest I would sell at 20 shillings, one piece. Sometimes people say when you buy mangoes from, from uh, the farmers, 
you buy at five shillings. After you put the fuel, you came from Nairobi and you go back to Nairobi, it's about, it, it comes to about 10 shillings per piece. So it's always good and advisable. Now we sell at 20 shillings, but we don't exploit customers. Mangoes require proper management practices in order to produce quality yields. Some of the important factors to consider are soils which are sandy and organic in nature, proper drainage with a pH of 6 to 7, and the climatic conditions are wet and dry seasons of 4 to 5 months. You want your mangoes to grow well, make sure it has right, enough right. That's why you see this mango tree at the center there is something like a hole so that it can have enough right inside mangoes needs right to germinate that is why we we cut branches in between so that light can go in and mangoes can come out and big water is a critical aspect to any plant and living thing Mr. Tanjiro's farm is located near a river that flows all year long. Therefore, he has the advantage of pumping water from the river to utilize on his farm. My land is at the river front. So I use the river to pump some water to, uh, on top I mean, uh, in the mangoes when, when they started flowering. Or before even flowering, I give, I give them uh, them water. Then I use fertilizer and I use manure. Yes. Once once in a while. You can see this is the inner river, the one I use to irrigate the mangoes. And sometimes we use when tap water is not there, we use this for domestic. It's inner river. Sometimes it grows very, very big when it rains. Mango trees produce many flowers, but not all flowers will produce fruit. Flowers may develop on different parts of a tree at different times. Mango trees differ from other fruit trees because flowers do not require bees for pollination. A host of insects and fruit bats pollinate mango flowers. According to Mr. Njiro, his mango trees mainly flower in June and July to give the fruit a duration of seven to eight months for growth and ready for harvesting. Mango starts bringing uh, flowers in June. So from this June, July, August, September, October, November and December, seven months. Within seven months, mangoes are ready. Uh, eight months, they start even getting ripe from the tree. When the mango trees have flowered, it means that the fruiting season has begun and within a span of four months, the mangoes have started ripening. Within December and January, Mr. Njiro states that it is the best season for harvesting and the mangoes are ripe for the market. Most uh, mangoes like um, Apple, Tommy, Art King and Van Dyke, all of them grow together. Then we were after they get finished, that is in uh, January, we wait and February, in March Kent comes in. Kent is the last mango to, to pick from the tree. Compared to other fruit farming, mango farming sounds like a smooth sailing boat, but it has its ups and downs. Some of the mango farming challenges are pests and diseases. Diseases like fungal pathogen, powdery mildew, attack young fruit, flowers and foliage, leaving these areas covered with a white fungal powder and often developing lesions along and the undersides of the leaves. To prevent these diseases, apply a coating of fungicide on the suspectable parts when the buds appear and begin to open and ending at the harvest time. Pests such as mites and scale insects attack mango trees but generally do not result in the mango tree not producing fruit unless severe. Treating the tree with neem oil can prevent and help alleviate most pest issues. On Mr. Njiro's farm, these pests and diseases are evident but he attests with proper control it is less likely to affect the production of mangoes. 
we have we have fries we have mango fries like uh, you can if i can show you some some fries inside here we have some fries which which uh, we use some baits to bring the to catch the fries so these are the types of fries these are the types of fries which uh, go to mangoes then they lay eggs in the mangoes then after some time you get some some wadudus inside the mango so this is what we try to trap before it goes to the before it goes to the mango we use baits yes and we have two types of baits we have liquid bait which attracts uh, female insects and we have a uh, hard bait like this one this is this is now bait is is working it brings them and uh, gets uh, uh, I mean, uh, traps them and it traps male yes the one with water uh, traps uh, female we also have um, some diseases when you see like now my mango is good but some leaves are can be affected by um, refrost. Refrost, we use some, some. Th there is what we use for for this. When we spray, there is insecticide which is called it is systemic, and most of the times, uh, I use from one company to so that uh, in sometimes they come here and see what we are doing. Well, we hope you have learned a lot from Mr. Njiru's story where he has explained more about farming mangoes, the different types of mangoes he has and what is the best way of doing mango farming. We will be taking a short commercial break but when we come back, we will tour his farm where he shall take us through every tree explaining to us more about the mango varieties in his Banyata farm.